YouTube. So we got an uh, alarm here on a Yaskawa Z1000 BFD. This is an OV2 DC bus or volt alarm. I'm gonna, before I get into the troubleshooting side, we'll just talk about VFDs real quick. Um, in the commercial field, you're gonna have VFDs all day long. Um, I'm not a VFD master. I don't know everything about VFDs, but give me the manual and I can pretty much get by on what needs to happen as far as troubleshooting. Uh, majority of a lot of the buildings that I service, most of our VFDs are gonna be Danfoss or Yaskawa. Uh, we have a couple ABBs, uh, it's kind of rare. And then I have two Toshiba drives that are on um, cooling towers. And then we used to have a couple Snyder ones, those are gone though. But everything is pretty much damn fast for us and Yaskawa. Um, so I kind of have a little bit of hands-on with Yaskawa and Dan Foss. But like I said, I'm not no master. I don't know everything off the back of my hand. Um, I've had people call me and try to have me help them figure out what's going on with the drive. You know, I can only do so much because I only know so much about the drive. So it's like, you gotta have your manual ready so we can go through that. You know, we gotta have this off so we can check visually inspect our wiring, make sure no dip switches or certain way, stuff like that. So, in any case, commercial field, you're gonna be dealing with drives, no matter what. Um, and if you have an issue with that, then you probably shouldn't be in the commercial field. But um, a lot of residential equipment for condensers, it's not necessarily a VFD, but it is an inverter on the compressors on a higher end system and it's somewhat similar to what exactly these are doing. So um, either way, this stuff is the future. You just kind of have to deal with it and just attack it as it comes. Um, it's rare that, you know, we have an issue with the drive. Most of the time it's either it's running fine or it takes a shit and then you need to, you have to replace it. Um, very rare that it goes into a specific alarm like this and it's causing some issues. And in our case, the one alarm will knock out pretty much everything here. It's knocking out all the fans and then these compressors are on BFDs and it's knocking these out too just because everything's in series with this alarm verification. Actually, it's not knocking out the Condenser fan. So you need to have the manual ready. Uh, your Scala makes it pretty easy on getting the manual on your phone or on a computer. The manual that came on this unit was only just a quick startup manual. It's not the an actual in-depth manual that what you would kind of need. The quick startup manuals don't really tell you too much. Just gives you a brief description of what the alarm means, and that's it on an actual manual for the drive from Yaskawa, it gives you causes, it gives you scenarios to where, what you could do to try to fix the issue. I've had this issue actually happen about four years ago on a return fan on a, on a McQuay unit. And I changed the parameter on there to, to see if that would take care of it. And it's been fine since. Let's fast forward a couple days ago, another McQuay unit. Same thing happened with this alarm. So I changed it, it's been fine. So that's what I'm gonna do to this one since I've already had experience with this alarm. I'm not gonna say that this is gonna permanently fix it, but what from I've done already, it has. So that's why I'm gonna do that. If in any case it doesn't fix it and I still need to troubleshoot, then I'll take, I'll take it on from there and then see what needs to happen um, this unit 
Uh, not all units are going to do it, but this unit... It's got a... Kind of like a paper diagram here for different things. This is an Aeon unit, so it kind of went a little overboard, but this is good that they give you this information to help you out um, with certain things. Like, it shows you your wiring here, what your gauge, your size should be for a certain amount of distance. And that's pretty cool. Helps you, like I said, for anything like that for doing install or if you need to remove a wire and replace it tells you what you need to use but skip all that this is a Yaskawa kind of cheat sheet here that they paid so it gives you certain scenarios here certain things you can do for certain um, changes and it gives you a quick troubleshooting guide on certain alarms and as you can see here it's got an OV alarm which and there we have an OV2 and I'll show you in the manual what that explains what it's doing uh, and then it has your high voltage wiring set up here it's giving you how to read the nameplate of the drive and it's got your uh, ah, fuck I forgot what it was called but you scan it with your phone and it's gonna bring up uh, your Scala application on the phone to help it's probably gonna be in the manual but that's pretty cool. Not all units do that. So, getting back in here. It's already pulled up the manual on my phone. Now, uh, there's 382 pages. So, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to do a quick search. That OV2. Find OV2. Go down. Now I got two out of seven. So right here. And I can't get this damn camera to focus. So I have to read it to you. It just says keep at display OV2 uh, fault name over voltage 2 bus voltage is boosted because the motor cable is too long cause the wiring is too long possible solution shorten the shielded motor cable lower the carrier frequency switch on internal EMC filter if the power supply has a neutral ground that's all it gives you for this fault that's it now you go up to OV, which is right above it, and OV is actually on that quick guide on the door that I just showed you. Look all the uh, possibilities you got here for causing, for causes, and for possible solutions. So I kind of just take consideration this alarm as well because it is an overvolt alarm. This is telling me on the overvolt too that the wiring is too long. So that right there, you just kind of have to think about your application. So now I got two return fans. I have three supply fans. Only one of the supply fans is going to this alarm. If my wiring was too long, you would assume these would be an alarm. These would be an alarm. The return fans are further away, but these aren't going an alarm just this one only so right there just common sense that's knocking the possibility out that the wiring is too long I, I, I call bullshit on that and on top of this I have 72 of these drives on this basic property out here 72 and only just this one they're all set the same only just this one is showing this alarm so then you need to think, okay, it don't start diving in thinking it's the wiring. Now, if all these units were doing this, this alarm, okay, take a step back, we need to check wiring. Something's going on with the wiring. But that's the thing about drives. Sometimes they might do a little glitch and do some weird alarm and you reset it and everything's back to normal and it never comes back. But for this case, the, this 
As soon as you reset, it comes on for about 30 minutes to an hour and then it kick, it trips again. Something like that that's re repeating itself, then it's definitely, you gotta take care of that. I'm not saying just reset and walk away, but sometimes these drives, like I said, they're a little finicky and if you don't know exactly what it means off the top of your hand or um, going off the manual, then most of the time you call tech support, they're gonna tell you just reset it and then you get just main monitor the drive. So, on here I'm looking more into the OV side. Gonna think it's something else with maybe a parameter or setting. So one of the first ones on here that's saying to check is um, an enable stall prevention during deceleration. Meaning that when your drive's slowing, slowing down the motor, it doesn't have somewhat of a stall to cause a spike in voltage. So that is on a parameter L304 and needs to be set to one to enable. So let's go ahead and get my foot in here. You're gonna to wanna to go to parameters, actually programming. Not parameter, oh, parameters are in the programming. And hit enter. You wanna to go to L3. It's one, so this is enabled, so that's fine. Next step is enable the over voltage suppression function L311 parameter set to one to enable. So L311. L3, it's 4, so we need to go up. 6, 7, 11. Over voltage suppression disabled. So we're going to enable that. Then I'll hit escape. Now when I do changes also to drives, I write the stuff down because you don't want to do some shit to it and something happens in the future and you don't know what the hell you did. So it's always good to write this stuff down. Also, if someone else comes out here, they know what you went and did and they can try to assess from there as well. So L311 to one. So I'm just gonna write on here. 11 to 1 Here it's gonna still be an alarm. Hit the reset button. It's taking everything out. We're clear. We're clear. We're clear. And we're clear. That should solve this issue. And. That is one of the um, resolutions for that alarm. Like I said, I'm at a VFD 
uh, master, but certain things you can try what the manual is referencing and they will help you. If worst comes to worst, call tech support. Sometimes them guys will help you out. Sometimes they don't. I only say that because you talk to a tech support guy who's having a bad day, um, you're not gonna get very far. But sometimes you'll talk to a guy who seems like he's happy to be there and wants to help you and you'll be able to figure these things out um, over the phone with him. Um, just kind of know certain things when he asks you. So it'd be kind of good if you just glance over your few things on your drive here, look at the buttons, cause he's gonna, he's gonna think that you kind of already know how to go through to get to parameters. So just, just a little heads up, uh, just makes things quicker. But that should take care of this. Um, that's a quick little, I want to say quick, it's been 60 minutes, but that's what I've done to this alarm and I showed you exactly how I went through it, checked it, did it. Yeah. All right. See you in the next one.